Welcome to another Trailblazers podcast. Today with me is Shawnee Berg. She is with the Operating Engineers of Manitoba, local eight, sorry, 987 out of Manitoba. She is equipment, she is an equipment operator and a single mom. Welcome, Shawnee. Hi, everybody. Hi. Thanks Bill. for joining us. Yes, thanks for joining us. Um, how are you doing? How's the weather in Manitoba? I'm good. You weather in Manitoba has been okay. Lots of rain. Um, yeah, we get a little bit of sunshine today. Finally get to see the sun. What's this bright light in the sky? Everybody asks. <laughs> exactly. Right. It's May long weekend. So yeah, we always get the nasty weather on the May long weekend, but, uh, yeah, here in Alberta, I'm sure it's going to snow at some point. It always does. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Anyways, let's hop right into it. Um, so you're an operating engineer, uh, or you're an equipment operator. How long have you been an equipment operator? I've been running machines since August of 2014. So that's quite, that's eight years. That's eight years. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Do you have some company there? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Somebody's sneaking on in, eh? Oh, okay. I see. I see. Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to sneak by. <laughs> What's that? Yeah. Trying to sneak by and not interrupt, I guess. Oh, oh yes. I yeah, that's all good. We we can edit that out. That's the, the technology we have. Anyways, sure. how <laughs> how did you get started in the trades? Um, so how I got started in the trades was uh my dad called me one day and asked me if I wanted to go work up in Fort McMurray with him. And I said yes, obviously. So and then like I don't know. It was pretty rough go in the beginning I remember like it was a very rough go I actually kind of hated it at first and I wasn't gonna go back like because it was a three weeks on one week off thing and I just kept going back <laughs> so you stuck it out and then and then kept at it and so what changed for you what were you doing first of all and then what what changed what make you what made you like it um, so like I was running, um, rock truck and packer and dozer and stuff, obviously not knowing a clue what I was doing. Cause I'd never done that before. So I had a lot of learning to do. And I think, I don't know, I just learned to like it. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, it's a, it's a good point to be made because a lot of times when we do jump into something, the, the great unknown it is a little, you know, it's a little threatening at first, right? But when you learn and uh, and we do learn as we go, we end up liking it once we get it all figured out, right? It's uh, sometimes that challenge, you do have to push through the hurdles just to uh, to make it to the next step, right? No, that's cool. That's a good story. And Fort McMurray, man, that's a busy place too, right? <laughs> I've never been and it's in my own province. So it's I've never been up there. And I don't know how people can live there. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's quite a place. I've heard lots of stories. But then, but then, like, but then again, I've lived in the country all my life. So yeah. Yeah. Living. Well, did you do work camp? Were you staying in the camp too? No, we were living in the city of oh, whatever okay. town, whatever you want to call it city. We'll consider a city. Yeah. I don't know. I've never been there. Um, so how far have you explored your trade? Are you your journeyman now? No, I'm not like, um, so, um, the heavy equipment side doesn't have an actual like journeyman thing like there's courses you can take okay. but in manitoba the course isn't really relative it doesn't mean anything to anybody maybe like when you get hired you get paid a higher rate like wait wait <laughs> wage at first but then um i don't know so like yeah it's not a bread seal but okay no that's good to know i didn't know that so yeah. there's the, so the operating engineers, there's a heavy equipment side. What other sides are there to, to the, what you do? Um, they, I know Manitoba 987 has a uh, hydrovac on their team okay. and, um, uh, tower crane, mobile crane and stuff like that. So I did go to school for mobile crane in 2016 and then I've also ran a couple uh, temporary elevators or skips, as people would say. So, okay. yeah. So normally, what do you do now? Because I've seen some photos of you in a, it's a backhoe, right? Or, right? It's here. Yeah. Okay. I'm right now. Okay. So 
currently I'm running a skid steer. I'm grading yard, like houses, properties before they get topsoil and sod. Okay. So I grade it to the grade sticks that the surveyors put out and yeah. Well, that's really interesting. That's pretty cool. So you get to, you get to do the final, final layer before the grass goes in and the landscaping. That's yeah. pretty cool. That's interesting. Okay. So what is your favorite aspect of your trade? I take a lot of pride in what I do. So like, I like it to look good and perfect and like know that I did that. And at the end of the day, my name is on that job. Like that's my job. I did that. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. We talk about that a lot when we do the podcast too. the great pride in your work, even if nobody knows, you know, you know, exactly. like, you, you know. know, we, we talk a lot about, and I do it to my own son too. And he's like, done with hearing it every time you drive through a residence or or a town I did that and I worked there and I did this and that that's mine and stuff it's there's such a great pride to to what we do yeah exactly like oh I did the pad there or you know like I did that house that house and there's one house on a street in Winnipeg that has my name etched into the side of the foundation <laughs> nice oh you did a little little uh you signed I your did. name my co-worker did and I was like okay whatever <laughs> that's good hey if we can do it in sidewalks why can't we do it in the side of the house right <laughs> exactly well it gets covered up it gets purging on it and stuff so you won't yeah. see yeah but you know it's there <laughs> no that's that's cool okay so what obstacles have you overcome along the way well, as a mother of two young kids, like childcare has been a little bit of an issue sometimes. Like recently I had my babysitter actually quit. She gave me her two weeks. So now I'm like, damn. <laughs> yeah. So, and thankfully, like I found someone pretty quickly. So I'm mm-hmm. thankful for that. But like, not a lot of people want to watch your kids for 12 plus hours a day. Right. Mm-hmm. And then it's early mornings. And then my daughter's going to school in September. So that's yeah yeah you'll have to deal with before and after school care and that's always been an issue for for everyone in the trades not just women but it does we we do seem to always carry the load of the child care um before and after school care doesn't always uh work within the same hours that we work so there are there are you know there are a lot of us that are out there fighting hours what's that daycares don't work in the same hours right and you have to find an employer that's yeah. And it's expensive. Yeah. Pricey. Yeah. Yeah. And then, like, along with, you know, finding childcare, I've, ha- I've had some discrimination happening against like me and stuff, but I usually don't stick around at those workplaces. I usually move along pretty quickly. I'm not dealing with that. Yeah, no, exactly. And, and you do have that choice, right? You don't have to put up with that kind of stuff. And what we're finding, especially in Alberta, I'm assuming it's the same in Manitoba. There's such a shortage of skilled tradespeople right now um, that that discrimination, if it if it isn't already gone, it's going to have to be gone if they want to find people to work on their jobs, because we can't even fill our calls here right now. And it's shutdown season. Exactly. <laughs> Everybody's nope. going to have to set aside their prejudices. And, and you know, it's a, it's it's just not going to be tolerated. It shouldn't be tolerated anyway. And it doesn't help that like all these baby boomers, these older people are starting to retire now. Yeah. Yeah. Guys in their seventies and there's so many of them still working. Right. Exactly. We do have a lot that on our, our site right now that, uh, you know, and we, it's great to have them there um, because of their experience and, and what they offer. But honestly, you know, we don't want to put them at risk either, you know, Cause I, I'm not near retirement, but I can feel the difference in my body. I'm not as strong as I used to be. I can't wrap myself into a pretzel to get a well done anymore. right? <laughs> like I used to be able to. So yeah, we welcome that senior experience, but it is, we should be allowing them to retire and bringing in a new workforce. That's a whole different podcast though. We should do another one about recruitment. Anyways, um, yeah, being a single mom is an obstacle. Are there any other obstacles you've overcome? Um, discrimination. It's it's kind of hard to, when it's a, a predominantly male trade, sometimes there are some things we have to deal with too, right? Exactly. I'm not really, not a whole lot. Good. That's good. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's good. Sometimes finding a job can be a little bit rough, but 
apparently when you're not looking for a job, you find a job. Yeah. You seem to have a few offers on the table right now. And that's, a, that's good. Right. Yeah. That's awesome. That's, that's never, never a bad thing. Right. When you have choices to make like that. Yeah. Okay. So did you ever have other women you could look to for support during, during, uh, you know, the time that you've been in the trade? Um, so this is not even on the topic of women, but so the person that has been like the biggest support in my life and my whole career has been my dad, really yeah. my father. I look to him for advice all the time, you know, calling him, asking him, you know, right. <laughs> Just all the time. I have worked with other women and learned from them. Like currently I'm working with another woman and like, she so where I used to work she also used to work and now I came over to the dark side I guess her side <laughs> oh yeah so then like watching her work is like holy moly like damn I'm gonna miss that and stuff so or I missed it like watching her do her thing I missed but yeah so uh, like it, being able to learn from another experience uh, woman is pretty freaking awesome yeah it is it's good to have other people that are like you that are in the trade but it's, it's really great to have somebody in the family that, that you can call as well. So you're second generation operating engineer then. Yes. That's pretty cool. That's very cool. My dad, of course, is in the trade too. So I got to do the same thing. Hey, dad, uh, this happened today. How do I make it better? What, what was that all about or whatever, right? No, that's awesome. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, it's great. And, and they know you too. So, you know, they, they don't make you feel awkward for asking the question either, right? This might be a dumb question, but what's the answer? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay, so what does a day in your life look like on a work day? So on a work day, I um, usually wake up at about 5.15ish, depending how lazy I am or if I prepared stuff the day before. Um, I get get up and get ready to go work if I have my kids I'll take my kids to the babysitter for about 5 45 then I have to be at work for 7 a.m actually that's 6 30 right now so I leave sooner <laughs> so I leave at like 5 30 and I work in Winnipeg and live in Steinbeck so I have about an hour drive to work wow yeah yeah the old commute too we have to deal with the commute as well right yeah, exactly. And then so then I get to work and I pre trip my machine. And if I'm taking a truck and trailer, I'll do that too. And then I'll load my machine, chain it down and head out for the jobs for the day, do the jobs, you know, whatever needs to be done, clean up garbage, make everything look pretty, which is kind of hard to do because it's so muddy out right now in Manitoba. And then uh, the work day usually ends about six o'clock in the evening. So then I will head back to the shop um where I work we leave our machines on the trailer actually which is a little surprising but okay <laughs> um and then we head home yeah then I head home if I have to get my kids I get my kids and make supper shower and go to bed and yeah. wake up, do the same thing rinse and repeat <laughs> yes exactly isn't that the truth yeah yeah I remember when my guy was young my my son was young and oh boy it's, it's exhausting, but planning ahead, I'm telling you, planning ahead makes a big difference. If you're organized, you can pull it off. I used to pack lunches in the evenings, all of our lunches, right. And have breakfast ready to go. And like my tea all like laid out, <laughs> right. So, cause I'm not a morning person. So I like, I'm a tornado out the door in the morning. Yeah. It's you yeah, exactly. be organized when you have kids, it's, it's a game like, changer. I cook, I cook myself suppers on the weekends and that usually is enough for me to go for lunches all week <laughs> yeah. and then like for supper someday like for supper like all week last week I had like grilled cheese sandwiches <laughs> and Easy. yeah yeah fried an egg and put some cheese between the bread and the egg and fried whatever it's like an egg and cheese sandwich yes that sounds good that's what I had for breakfast this morning <laughs> anyways it is <laughs> <laughs> totally is um okay next question for you is do you have any advice for others that may be looking to join the trades um no well okay so I'm a small woman I'm like 100 pounds if that and like I run big machines and so on and so forth <laughs> and um so like I run rock track dozer 
I haul my own machine in the truck, haul my own trailer, pull my own trailer and everything, you know, just don't let that like limit you and, you know, put your mind to it and have fun. Don't, yeah, just don't let anything frustrate you really. Getting frustrated over something is not worth it. Just, you know, in the back of your mind, think of why you're frustrated and how you can overcome why you're frustrated. And if it's really worth being frustrated over it or angry about it or anything like that. That's great advice. I'm going to take that advice too. (laughs) Yes, no, that's great advice. A lot of women do think that because they're a smaller stature, that they can't do this kind of stuff. And it just depends on what trade you're in. I mean, you just got to be smart about how you do things like, you know, like for instance, my job requires a lot of physical work sometimes or handwork that we have to do. And uh, for me, that was like a big thing. And like, I, I got really good. I got really good at the machine as fast as I could so that I didn't have to do so much handwork. And also at the same time, saving my coworkers from having to do all that work. Yeah, exactly. Well, and and there's parts of the trade that are going to be physical, like for, for welding trade, we have to haul around some pretty heavy bottles sometimes like the oxyacetylene stuff. So you find, you just find a way that it works for your body, right? Like I used to, if I had to get a a bottle into a welding truck, I would use my knee as kind of the pivot point and push one end down, which raises the other end and then you slide it in. Right. So there are ways, there are ways to actually do it or, and you know, heavy lifting too, a lot of times occupational health and safety doesn't want us to lift anything over 50 right because then we risk injury so yeah there's ways there's ways to to do it even though we're not you know a big giant you know ox of a you know bodybuilder body right yeah there's always ways no that's great advice that's great advice so uh the final remarks are yours if there's anything else that you haven't talked about that you'd like to share or any advice anything you want the floor is yours I don't know. I don't really have anything else to say. Okay. Yeah. No, not really. Well, I think, I think that uh, your story is important to share because a lot of people think that, um, you know, they think it's a little bit scary to get into your industry, right? Any of the trades are kind of scary, but I think you are my first equipment operator that I've done a podcast with. So I'm going to share the living yeah, I'm going to share this podcast as far as I can um, and get the word out there. And uh, yeah, it's great. It's really great to have you. Thank you for sharing your story for sure. Thank you, Jill. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah, no, it's great. And we met actually through, um, what was it? The, oh, work. And we then met- I'm also, yeah, I'm also um, an executive member of Manitoba's Build Together. Yay. Yeah. Yay. Yes, yeah. Yes, you're a member of Build Together. So yeah, we met through Build Together. I'm in Alberta, Build Together, and you're in Manitoba, Build Together. But we also were in the um, Lean In Circles. Lean In Circles. Yes, that's how we met. Yeah, because we shared a group. Anyways, okay. Well, thank you very much for sharing your story. Um, I appreciate it. And you take care and stay in touch. Um, You know, let's do a podcast again in a few years and see where you're at and see, because I know you just, uh, you, you have a lot of exciting things going on in your world right now. You've done a lot of, of one aspect of your career and you're thinking about opening it up. So yeah. and doing some more things. Maybe there'll be more exciting things in the future. Yes. Yes. I'm hoping. I'm hoping. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Never a dull moment in the trades, right? No, never, <laughs> never. <laughs> okay. I mean, now we're throwing mud balls at each other. <laughs> <laughs> Always fun, right? Always fun. Okay. I'm going to stop recording now, but don't go anywhere because everybody that does a podcast with me gets a free shirt and stuff. So I'll talk to you about that in a second. Um, Thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you for having me, Joe.